Hello, my name is Julian Smith. I'm a marine surveyor. My company, Hamble Marine Surveys, is based in southern UK. And we specialise in surveying GRP, steel, aluminium and wood yachts and motorboats of any size in any location worldwide. Today we're going to be talking about doing, carrying out a hull survey on a GRP yacht. This yacht here is a Fisher 37 as an example. This yacht is currently being sold by John Rodriguez Yachts and I as surveyor have been commissioned by the vendor to carry out a pre-sale survey. So this differs from a pre-purchase survey in that I'm actually working in this particular case uh, for the owner of this vessel as opposed to a potential purchaser. So we're at the stern of the vessel here and we're about to commence our survey. We're going to start by looking at the steering system that includes the rudder but also we're going to be looking at propeller as well and the stern gear. The first thing we're going to need is a camera, a good quality digital camera, uh, so that we can document items we found, uh, both in this particular case for the benefit of the seller, the vendor, but also potentially for a purchaser, which is what this survey is all about, to provide the vendor with the tools and information he needs to prepare his boat for sale, but also, if necessary, providing information and transparency for a potential purchaser. So a good digital camera is first. Secondly, a notepad, obviously, and a pen to allow us to document what we're finding and any other relevant information. In my case, a sounding hammer. This hammer is just a cheap, common, commonly purchased uh, hammer, nothing special. It allows me to understand uh, the construction of the hull and what I'm hearing or feeling as a result. And then finally, uh, a moisture meter. This will allow us to assess the moisture of the hull. This particular moisture meter is a Sovereign Quantum Marine Moisture Meter. There are others on the market. And we're going to commence the survey now. Before we do so, it's worth just mentioning about the warranties and the different sorts of survey, um, and for who and for which party. As has already been mentioned, this particular survey that we're going to be looking at on this craft is for the vendor. This is a pre-sale survey. Other types of surveys are condition surveys, whether it be for insurance or finance, and pre-purchase surveys, and these are commissioned by the purchaser of a vessel, different to what we're doing here. There are also valuation surveys, and obviously damage surveys as well after an incident. So it is always a recommendation that if you are looking to purchase a vessel that you commission an independent marine surveyor. What we're seeing here on this particular vessel is we have a three blade yellow metal propeller. We don't know exactly the composition of the metal here but it's likely to be a bronze alloy um, and it's secured to the shaft with a nut and then in this particular case there is a split pin that passes through the nut. On other craft and other types of arrangement on, on, on vessels, whether it be yachts or motorboats, uh, the securing of the propeller may be different. In fact, the propeller may be a different, it may be a folding type propeller. This particular shaft passes into a stern seal here, which then passes into a tube, terminating in a water-cooled pack stern seal uh, at the rear of the engine compartment. As you will appreciate on other types of vessels, uh, whether it be a modern day production yacht, they may have a, a cell drive, or they may have an engine connected to a shaft that passes via a P-bracket terminating in a propeller. So we'll continue the server at the back of the, the vessel here uh, with the propeller and the rudder. Um, what we're going to look at now is the propeller in particular. When we're looking at a propeller, whether it be a folding propeller or a fixed blade propeller like this, what we're looking for is evidence of damage, first of all, to the tips of the propeller, which in this case they're not, they're in very good condition. We're also looking for evidence of corrosion in the form of pitting uh, on faster planing vessels. Um, this can be caused due to cavitation, but on a vessel like this it's uh, more than likely going to be the result of uh, galvanic corrosion and there is no evidence of that here either. Uh, what we can do also to 
assess the structural integrity of the blades is to strike them with a sanding hammer. And what we're looking to hear, and I don't know if you can hear that, is quite a convincing ring. And that shows us that the structure of the propeller uh, remains intact and it has strength still. One of the other items that we're looking for on propellers, and it's becoming an issue, especially as more brass alloys are used on vessels these days, uh, because they're cheaper, um, is desincification, which is a known issue where the uh, brass alloys um, have the zinc leached from them um, because there is inadequate anode protection, and that can result in the metal appearing slightly pink in colour because the copper aspect or portion of the alloy becomes, becomes dominant and that's where you get the colour from. So we're looking at the rudder now. Uh, on this particular vessel, um, the rudder is an unbalanced rudder, that meaning that the blade is all aft of the shaft as opposed to a balanced rudder, or where you have a blade in front of or preceding the shaft. Uh, we can see on this particular vessel, uh, the rudder stock comes down to a join plate here secured by four bolts. Um, on a lot of vessels this is not the case, the shaft goes directly into the rudder blade um, and then normally what happens is the rudder shaft or stock sorry, uh, runs down the blade and then there are tangs or strengthening uh, arms that come out from the rudder stock and they're welded and then normally the rudder blade is then constructed in two pieces either side of that metalwork, that frame. What we're doing when we're looking at a rudder, apart from looking uh, at the security of the bearings, making sure there's no excess play and so indicating potential wear in the bearings, we're also tap testing the surface of the rudder. Note when I'm tap testing I have a hand against the actual substrate that I'm testing and I'm listening and feeling as well and that's important. We're on the port side of the vessel now, um, slightly further aft and we're going to be looking now at the anodes and some skim fittings. Both of these are very important aspects of the hull survey. This particular anode is a pear shaped anode uh, and it's, it's called a hull anode. It's secured by two studs, in this case it's got two nylock locking nuts on which is good to see. Both are stainless steel and both in good condition. You can see this particular anode is quite heavily pitted and this is good because this is telling me the anode is actually working and that's what we want to see. There is nothing more concerning for a surveyor uh, than a yacht coming out of the water and having bright new looking anodes on. Internally this anode will be connected to cabling which will connect to parts of the vessel such as the stern gear and possibly skim fittings and these will provide cathodic protection. When we're looking at the anodes, apart from using a multimeter to assess the continuity with the other various areas of the vessel such as the stern gear, we're also tapping it to make sure it's secure and we're also tapping around the anode to make sure that the studs that pass through the hull haven't caused any water ingress, softening of the laminate or cracks. Here is a classic skim fitting. So we have a fitting here that is screwed to the hull and in some cases laminated in. It's onto the threaded interior surface of this that valves are fitted, seacocks. One of the things we look for when, as a surveyor is we want to see the condition of the skin fitting and in particular we want to see that it hasn't suffered from corrosion or it hasn't been damaged over time. One of the ways we can do this is by physically scraping, in this case the anti-fouling, off the surface. And what we do is we gently scrape the surface, removing the anti-fouling as we can see here, is evidence of a bright yellow material underneath. This skin fitting is likely to be bronze or brass. It's certainly a yellow metal alloy anyway. And we can see that it's bright yellow, indicating there's no corrosion, and also 
no evidence of desinkification, which would give the appearance of a pink mottle defect. What we can also do is around the skin fitting we can tap Again, assessing the condition of the laminate, making sure there's no evidence of softening or voids in this area. We've moved now to the bow area on this particular vessel and we're going to be looking at a bow thruster. This vessel has a bow thruster contained within a tunnel. There are other types of bow thrusters, retractable and such like. One of the key items as a surveyor we're looking at on a bow thruster is the join between the bow thruster tunnel and the hull itself. This particular vessel has a raised lip around the forward edge and the purpose of this is to improve the flow of water so as to not allow the tunnel to create excess drag. One of the items we can do is by using our sounding hammer we can go round the edge of the bow thruster to assess for signs of cracking and also signs of voids. In this particular case this bow thruster is sound and the installation is of a high quality. The other areas that we're going to be looking at are the blades of the bow thruster itself and in this particular case there is a small button anode that we're going to check and see that that is intact and in good condition. Again, all four blades on this particular bow thruster are in good condition and the anode is also in good condition. As part of the continuing hull survey, other aspects of this vessel we'll be looking at is the condition of the top sides and obviously the hull surface. Again we're using our sounding hammer to tap the surface of the hull to check for soft or loose laminate and also the evidence of potential delamination. And likewise on the top sides as well, in this particular case this vessel has been painted and we'll be looking at the quality of the coating system evidence of damage to that and also evidence of potential impact damage both past or present. This particular vessel we can see that the quality of the paint finish is very high and there is no evidence of delamination, voids or any deformities on the whole surface. What we're also looking at is the antifoul coating. This particular vessel has got a bright red antifoul coating and you can see the quality of the antifoul coating is high. This vessel, it appears, has only recently been antifouled. So that brings us to the end of this video. If we were going to continue on this particular hull survey, we would be looking at aspects of the hull to deck join. We'd be looking at the internal structure and support of this hull, uh, whether it be an inner moulding, stringers, and also the bulkheads. We'll be looking at different aspects of these types of vessels and motorboats in later videos and we'll be looking at the preparation of vessels and ongoing maintenance as well. Look forward to seeing you then.